Bird, 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 bird. Feeling, I'm feeling spry. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. It is, uh, what is it? What is it today? Jesus, criminy. It's the 23rd of January. Uh, yeah, three weeks and counting now before I leave for Pheasant Fest. But always, let's thank our Patreon patrons first, who will have a Zoom room this week. Um, I'll have some more videos to show them from the projects I'm working on, and uh, that'll be fun, and you get to see that. So Patreon patrons get to come in and have a little peek at this new project, yeah, and other things, you know, discounts on things like Pike Gear and all that other stuff, Onyx and, you know, Waltons and, and, and Canine Athlete, all kinds of Patreon benefits, plus you get sneak peeks. Yeah, that's exactly what you get. Pike gear, you don't need a sneak you don't need a sneak peek. You can come you want to talk about a sneak peek, come to Pheasant Fest right across the aisle. Brent's gonna have Pike gear on display, all the clothes, all the pants, the vest, everything from soup to nuts, technical gear for the you upland hunters who are coming to Pheasant Fest. You'll have a little changing room. You can try them on. You can see what I've been yakking about for the last three years. That's going to be so much fun. Onyx will be there. They'll have, they won't be in my booth. They'll be right down the aisle from me, but we're going to have a lot of fun with Onyx. We've got some stuff coming up. They're going to be hosting a, a Friday uh, hospitality suite. Oh, that's going to be fun. Wait till you see that one. Don't don't miss Pheasant. You see the, the, tr- the crux of this whole podcast intro? Don't miss don't miss Pheasant Fest because you can see stuff. Now, Boss Shot Shells is not going to be at Pheasant Fest, but I will have some with me. Just if you, well, I can't say I'm giving them away, but I'm just saying you can, you can yak to me about the leth, lethal, leth, leth, what's, lethality, is that the word? The lethality of copper-plated business from Boss. Walton's will not be there, but Walton's is going to send me a whole bunch of stuff to give away. At, I'm just telling you, the whole Pheasant Fest is going to be hanging around the HDP Village. Um, Walton's is going to be donating a whole bunch of spices. Because um, what we're going to have is a cornhole game. And we've we got a Gunner Kennel food crate with a five-inch hole in it. And I don't mean go ahead and practice. It's smaller than a cornhole hole. But we're going to have this set up, and you can donate. You could be a cheapskate and do it for free, but you can donate like a dollar to Habitat, take a shot. We're going to have Gunner koozies, HDP koozies, uh, hats from Gunner, Onyx gift cards, Walton Spices. All, the, all, the, all of my sponsors are going to be there in one way or another, you know, because Gunner Kennels, they got two Gunner Kennels there. There will be a giveaway there on Sunday for a Gunner Kennel and a Gunner Kennel food crate. And you can see what I'm talking about. You can actually put your hands on all this stuff. That's what's going to be cool about Pheasant Fest. Um, Garmin will not be there, but they will have stuff for me to give away for the Cornhole for Conservation game. See, I, I'm going to back up all my sponsors who can't make it. It's trade show time of year, and they're, they're, they're probably, well, they just got done with SHOT Show, and God knows where else they're going. W Hunting Supply. They are not going to be there, but they are there for you if you are looking for dog training equipment. Go to W D O U B L E, letter U, D U Hunting Supply. I know it sounds like Ducks Unlimited, but it's not. Deck drawer system. Well, you'll probably have to come out to the parking lot to see my deck. If you need to see one, how it's used, how it fits, how the drawers work, you come out to Pheasant Fest. And when I go out and have my obligatory, you know, five or six little backwoods cigars during the, you know, leave all my crew there at the, at the bar, you can come out, you can open it, you can see what I, you can see how I use the duck, the, the duck, the deck drawer system, and then you'll be, you know, envious and you'll be ordering one of those too. And you know what, I'll leave my Weatherby shotgun right in there, but in case you don't want to walk out, in case it's cold in the parking lot, Weatherby shotguns will be at Pheasant Fest right around the corner for me. So there, you can, you can put your hands on what I've been yakking about. Purina Pro Plan, well, they're always there. Oh, i got to jump back to Gunner Kennels. 
Take a look at my Instagram this week. Gunner Kennels came out with a door, a winter door, and it goes on with magnets. It's genius. Like everything Gunner does, it's genius. It's got a couple of it's got a couple of ties to it in case you're like blown in the wind or you're in some North Dakota 50 mile an hour tailwind. So you won't the door won't blow off the kennel. But I'm telling you, you your dog's body heat will now heat up the inside of that kennel. I always put a little straw down in mine. I, I don't like I don't like anything but straw. Dogs seem to just do good in it. It's a little messy, of course. So what? Dogs are messy. And you got the winter door, the winter cover. They've always had the winter cover. Now they got the door. Goes on like a magnet. And it's even what's really nice for even just on a cool night, you just slap the door on. It's a magnet. It just boom right to the door. In the morning, take it off. If you you know if the dog's sleeping in the truck, which in a lot of cases they have to, they do. Pierre will be there with the dog the bird dog stage. They'll have the Smiths there. They'll have other people from Purina there. They'll have seminars on dog training. The, they're probably the reason why most people go to FET. One of the main reasons is to go to the Purina bird dog stage. Canine Athlete will be there right in the village with me. They're going to have new dog. They're going to have samples. They're going to have, oh, they're gonna, it's going to be fun. They're going to be right next to Jack. You know who Jack is? Don't say you don't know Jack. That's a game, actually. Um, yeah, Jack Butler's going to be there with his gum leaf boots. Yeah. Jack will be there. Wilderness Athlete will be there. And the rest of the whole big giant booth will be Hunting Dog Podcast and Upland Institute. It's going to be, well, don't miss it. I, I mean, it's worth the drive. Just you can literally get your hands on or see everything you hear me talk about in these obscenely long intros. Which this one's only been six hours, or six hours, six minutes and 35 seconds. So that's not bad. Come on. You got to give it to me there. So I can't wait to see you all at Pheasant Fest. Uh, this episode I did with Glenn Goldthorpe. And uh, Glenn reached out to me. You'll hear all about it. Um, I want to say it's not a new way of connecting breeders and buyers but it's going to be the new way because this is a different type of website that he started. He started this in, in England, over in the U.K., very successful, connecting breeders with buyers. And uh, you're, you're going you're gonna to enjoy this. And then, of course, Glenn and I just talk about how they train dogs and how I train dogs and how I'm somewhat always, what would you call it, U.K. curious. There, there's something to it. Have you ever watched the stuff? You know what I'm talking about. So I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you start making your plans. Get your hotel reservations. Get your butt to Pheasant Fest. Everybody's going to be there. You don't want to miss it. I love you guys. I love you girls. And I love you people to come to Pheasant Fest even more. No. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Hunting Dog Podcast. I am on a Zoom call with Glenn Goldthorpe. I know you don't know the name because about a week ago, I didn't know the name. And Glenn sent me an email, which I absolutely, you know, I've told so many listeners to this show, send me info if you run into somebody, you hear about something in the dog world. Because coming up with, you know, 50 episodes a year, and I guarantee I've never had an episode like this one for two reasons. It's a subject that I've never covered in eight years. And... It's a fellow I've never talked to other than last week. In fact, um, Glenn, why don't you just start off? Introduce yourself and kind of what you, where you were, what you've doing. And you don't have to tell everybody you're sitting in the sunshine in Cancun. <laughs> they don't have to know that. No. But tell us how we well, tell everybody what you started over there. Well, the good morning, everyone. Um, uh, and happy new year to all your listeners. Um, my name's Glenn. Uh, I'm the owner of a site called gundogsusa.com. So it's uh, the USA's sort of premier website for buying and selling gun dogs. And, you know, the, the added bonus is it's absolutely free to, to anyone who wants to advertise, you know, breeders and sellers who've got a litter of puppies. So, um, I mean, I, I do own a couple of websites back in the UK, and that's where I'm from originally. I used to trial gun dogs for many a year so i own uh gun dogs direct which is a, a very popular site in the uk and gun dogs uk likewise 
So um, and 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 the following we have back in the UK is is massive. Uh, we have a, such a, a great following. Uh, they're a little bit of a success story. So I thought it would be a good idea to get into the American gun dog market and and share the share the wealth and knowledge that you know us guys back in the UK do. And, um, and Glenn, this is you just launched this. So so people when they go mm -hmm. look, there's there's you're you're in the You've launched the website, but you're the, you're you're gathering. I mean, you you, you obviously, yeah. if somebody's looking for a particular dog right now today, it might not be on there. Yeah. But the goal is it will be a comprehensive site, absolutely, to, to connect breeders yeah. and buyers. Right. I mean, sadly, you've got to start somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. and you yeah. start at the beginning, and and it and it's to, you know, get. I, I, I'm a you know, I'm like you, Ron. You know, we spoke extensively off 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 this sort of these means off, off recording yeah off recording and, and we're we're very much alike um and you know so i'm <clears throat> honest and and i and i i train many gun dogs myself trial them at competitions so i know what it's like being a, a reptile breeder and 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 i know how much passion people put into their working dogs and the love for for hunting and i'm i'm a hunting man uh, so really, it's um, it's trying to give our listeners, give our customers yeah. something they can use, and it gives back to the sort of hunting community. Right. Uh, so my purpose really is to, you know, me and you have never met uh, since a, a week ago, and 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 mm -hmm. it's like trusting people's breed, you know, breeding techniques, listening to right. how people do things. You know, I'm always susceptible and i am so wanting to learn about how other people do business so you know how do they hunt right uh, it, it, i just find it so fascinating there's so many ways to skin a cat you know so there's no, there's no hard and lined way to train a gun dog right and, and likewise you know you, in back in the uk you'll get a lot of famous gun dog people who trial who mm -hmm. will use stud dogs from different areas to ha to enhance their own bloodlines, you know, mm -hmm. when they're on trials and competitions, and right, I'm sure the states is no different. When when someone eventually set, reaches out, I mean, obviously they're not going to talk to you on the phone. They can do this all online, right? It's it's, yeah, sure. it's, it's no, all it's very yeah. easy. Can they even do things like post their pedigrees, or would they just post their emails? Yeah, so it, I've made it very. I mean, like again, I'm not. A technical uh by no stretch of imagination I've, I've got a team back in the uk but we've we've made the website totally automated so yeah. I, I mean back in the day when i first started up you had to fill in these log you know these logging in details you had to remember passwords and i was like, oh my god i you know i can't right. this sort of thing and so I, i've i've kind of designed it around making it user friendly and easy so basically yeah. you just go on there there's a big button that says place an advert. You press that button and up pops a, a blank screen. You fill in the gaps, so the title of your dogs, the description, and then it gives you the ability to add photographs. So photographs of your pedigrees, photographs of your dogs, right, right. Is the sire, the dam. Uh, and then and then you place the advert, press the button, and it, and it activates. That's it. You yeah. Then you then get a link send, saying, look, you've now posted your advert. Should you need to edit it, press this link, and it takes you back into your advert to add new uh, new photos or more information. Yeah, or up updated as the puppies, updated. Get, as the puppies get older. Exactly. I, and I told you, you know, this is not an unheard of type of website. There's, there's a, I think there's a couple in the States, but yeah. they're very much just uh, a database of names, right? And then yeah. you... And I don't, I don't, I, I haven't wandered through any of the websites in a long time, but to make it to where you'd already get a better feeling of like, just from the back, like if someone's going to post a picture, I would certainly post a picture of the dam, the sire, yeah. and probably the pedigree and the puppies and update it. I, and if it's that easy to use, I, I think that's, I think that definitely will help people, you know, find what they're looking for. Um, well, we, you know, we were just discussing, uh, you know, previously about how busy we are. 
you know, yeah. we, we want to get out there and hunt with our dogs and things like that. So, look, you know, if, if you've got a litter of pups, you don't want to spend, you know, three hours trying to post an advert. It's like, right. give me 10 minutes, you pour it on, and, and it's doing what it should say on the tin. And that's, you know, getting out to the, the, the gun dog community in the U.S., no right. matter where you are in the States, uh, and and saying look you know um, and then you you're free to vet whoever then purchases your dogs because obviously right. you want them to go to good working homes right um, and so it's down to yourselves to sort of police and make sure that like you know, it would be dogs. in any case right Absolutely. but you know kind of the neat thing and I I always hear this term it drives me crazy there should be a better term for it you know the term trophy hunting right sure. It, it's like, oh, you could yeah. you could take that wrong, right? Yeah. And I hate the word backyard breeder because every breeder I know, their kennel is in their backyard. Yeah. The inference was, oh, the guy that just didn't do any health testing, didn't do any x-rays, did, you know what I mean? The inference is a puppy mill of out in the country where they're in rabbit hutches, you know? But yeah. So to my point, let's say the first time I had a litter, I absolutely was following the program. The only thing I could do was put an ad in a magazine that I was a member of, right? Sure. I, I didn't have a website. I didn't have the ability to build a website, but it was a good breeding. They were good dogs. Yeah. In fact, I think I got a breeder's award on my second breeding. And I had no way to make a website for anybody. I just, that's not, I'm like you. I Somebody's got to build the website, right? Yeah. Yeah. And back then, my daughters were even too young to help me. So a person, uh, especially, let's say, a first or second time breeder who's not going to go in, he's not hanging his shingle out there to sell 13 litters a year. He just, he's, but he's doing all the good job. He's getting the dogs tested. He's even maybe hunt testing them or trialing them. It can almost act like a little bit of a website for the person. Sure. That's, I mean, you know, look, I, there's amateurs in the game. Uh, you know, who have perhaps maybe a litter of pups once in a blue moon, mm -hmm. or there's professionals who do it on a more regular basis. Right. And 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 you would you you would probably say if you were more established as a as a as a proper professional, you wouldn't need a platform like that. Sure, sure. That's great. But there's the vast majority of huntsmen, I'm sure, in the in in in, in the US as it is in the UK are uh, sort of amateur bird people, you know, bird dog yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, everybody um, I know, you know, I know a few professionals, but 95% of the people I know in the dog world from testing and judging, they're all amateurs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're not getting paid for it, right? That's yeah. it. So, so it's sort of catering to, uh, it's catering to the, the, the normal Joe yeah. who, who goes with his pals with good dogs and good friends mm. and enjoys their time and and you know what so be if they've got a stud dog and they want to make a bit of pocket money and cover a bitch with it with a dog you know there's a platform to advertise its services or if right. and that's gundogsusa.com or if, if they've just had an accidental uh, maintain and they've got a litter of pups and they want to they want a platform to sell it you know this is this is what it's all designed for this is what it does in the UK and uh, with gun dogs direct it's it's extremely popular um so i just I, it would basically taking that template you know the simplicity right. you know there's no featured adverts to designed to make money from people or there's no there's no masses as advertisement it's right i i see the, the hunting community is a community. We're all the like-minded people. Right. Um, and, and, it, and it's great to, uh, you know, we're friends across the ponds now, you know? So it's, yeah. it, it's you know, I, I love, you know, I watched your videos on the Upland Institute. I thought it was fantastic. You know, it's what, watching how uh, people train their dogs, different breeds of dogs. Right. There's no one avenue to to train a dog you right. know the dogs are like people to me you know they've, they've all got different attitudes they've all right they all can take on knowledge in different speeds or, so or not at all, <laughs> or not, yeah, not at all. Yeah, exactly. we, we try not to keep those dogs around <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 um, but um you've got to you've got to you've got to have the you you know you've got to have the knowledge 
uh, an experience and you, you get that through hunting and the seasons as they go yeah. along. Yeah. To have these tools in your in your toolbox to mm -hmm. to tackle a dog when you're training them and doing things and right, you know, not what not one dog in all the dogs I trained and trialed in in the UK was the same. You know, yeah. they they, they yeah. took they took the knowledge on differently and and that with some things I had to do it in a different way. And I would go to professional trainers, friends of mine back in the UK, and say, "Look, I've got this dog doing this, yeah. and the, and I, I'm and I'm trying to do this and it." Oh, and he would give me an example and oh yeah. to the hour and five minutes. So, you know, it's 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 so important, you know, not to stay blinkered and think that there's only one way to train a gun dog. Right, right. Absolutely not. Yeah, Absolutely. there's only one way to win a contest or a trial, but <laughs> there's a well, lot that's of it. Yeah. A yeah. lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to get there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, and look, you know, with trials, you talk about competition and trials. I mean, the easy thing I think in trials is there are a set of rules. Right. This is what we're looking for. This is the standard. Right. And everyone works to that standard. Yeah. However, if the gun dog market is yay big, so big. Right. You know, only a small fraction of the 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 the, the gun dog community trial gun dogs. Oh yeah. So the yeah, bigger yeah. market is for the average listener who's listening today who's just got an interest in gun dogs maybe how how can i get a, a you know steadier on the woe command or right how can, how can i how can i get it marking a retrieve better or i you know how how can it you know uh be a steadier on the point whatever that might right. be right they, there's probably little teething problems that they want to improve so that you know they go to and speak to someone like you or a trainer right and, and they share that knowledge yeah it is is it i don't know if what it's like over in the uk i mean I've, I've i've vacationed over there but i've yet to to do anything what i would call fun like you know go behind a dog or stand yeah. stand on a uh, on a driven hunt that's going to happen one of these days but oh, right. um right because i i i've got to get myself some tweed okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and if i get the tweed i can't wear it here because everybody will make fun of me <laughs> so like lord of the matter I want to hunt with a tie on someday. Yeah, and, yeah, we got, we all do it. We all know, do. It. I've got pictures of my my uh, good friend of mine's uh, grandfather, and this this picture was taken in the state of Virginia, just on a hunt, just the regular Saturday hunt. Yeah, and they're both dressed up with a a tie. Yeah. So we we kind of lost that a little bit here, you know. Now oh. we got, we got blaze orange all over us, but. Uh, when I, where I was actually going, I, I get into rabbit holes, Glenn. Um, so, like, when people are looking for information, not not just in this category of connecting breeders and, and buyers, yeah, uh, is there is the YouTube channel like when I Google something like you said, how do I get my dog steadier, like to be a you know more staunch or whatever? Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. hit YouTube here in the states, there's there's almost too much information, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some good information. But it's yeah. not complete, and that yeah. goes to why we we built the Upland Institute. It's a way to do it, at least A to Z. But yeah. in the UK, is that just as popular? If you were back home, and you typed in something like that on YouTube, is there a a lot of it there? Is it or is it a different kind of? Well, I think it's like the US. I mean, you go on YouTube, and 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 it's very difficult to to filter through good advice mm -hmm. and, and and what i would call advice <laughs> is there is there whether, whether it's good or not look but the, but you know there's there's some extremely good trainers gun dog trainers in the uk right. um ben randall i know we you know we spoke who's going to be right. on later on in the year is phenomenal trainer you know, yeah. uh, he's launched a, a, a gun dog app, which is similar to the Upland yeah. Institute, where yeah. it, but 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 it does it via an app. Um, you know, great advice. And and when I when I'm on Facebook or Instagram and people are, you know, seeking advice, I always point them to reputable people who I know mm -hmm. uh, who have been trialed and tested and yeah. and, and 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 are solid. Um, right. However, that being said, there are some very good novices trainers who haven't won, you know, big trophies. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the in the gun dog world in the UK, is it's a small market. 
and and most people know people um, right. if you're in that world you'll you'll know who's it's probably yeah it's probably almost i would guess almost a little easier just by the size of the uk right i mean it's just not like <laughs> if i wanted to get a dog from you know washington state i got a 2000 mile drive <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think we fit in Texas a a few times. I mean, the worst case for you guys would be from the south of London to the uh, to Wales or something, right? I mean, but well, Scotland down to London is like what three hundred miles? Oh, that far, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's a long way for us. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's very popular. You know, the, the commercial side of shooting in the UK is massive. We do it a little different. There are what we call rough shooters who, who you know, do pigeon shooting mm-hmm. um, and walked up days where they just, you know, quarter and work their dogs, spaniels, like uh, yeah. some bird dogs. Uh, and then you've got the driven drives, you know, the, the commercial shoots where they'll, right. they'll, they'll pay, you know, maybe eight to ten guns and they'll pay a fee for the day and, Right, and beaters will beat the birds to the guns to the line right. of guns, and all the shooters are doing is just shoot. You know, having a day shooting birds of them. You know, I mean, that's can... it's like a duck hunt. You know, it's kind of like yeah. a duck hunt, but somebody getting the ducks to come over your blind. You know, exactly that. Exactly. And I've heard, I've heard people like, oh, I would never do that. I'm like, only reason I'm not doing it is because I can't get to England just like that yeah. and yeah. do it because I. Well, I, I mean, I, I think for the purists. You know, if the you know people are out. I mean, I, I've I said to you before. I said, I, I feel like the Americans do real hunting. You know, you're like yeah. you, you, you're searching really more actively than we do. Ours is more a controlled environment. But look, I, I, I mean, I've I've shot on some really good estates in the in the UK, and I must admit, it's great. It's yeah. great to, to practice your shooting, and when you when you drop a a forty yarder. You know, or, or fifty yard a bird, and and they're, and they're going some. Let me right. let me tell you, they're shifting. If they're coming off some of the moorlands, they're dropping. You know, the wings are back, and they're they're, they're going. I'll um, tell you, I got to tell you the story. I don't think I've ever told my listeners this story. We went to an Indian reservation in South Dakota years ago, and you have to have a a guide. You know, a, a resident of the of that reservation. Yeah. To take you around so it, it was definitely like private land because it's all owned by certain indians right but he's got permissions and he's got leases and the first guy we met you know it, it was a catastrophe and uh so we literally as we were going through town we saw a little sign outside of a out of a home off of on a hill and it said guided bird hunts i said let's see what this guy's about because the other guy Literally, he had a leg in a walking cast and a prosthetic on the other one. So <laughs> I, I know, I know he was not doing a lot of sharp tail bird hunting. Okay, no, so, not, and no. he certainly couldn't walk on the moors. You know? Yeah, 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 for sure. But anyway, this other fella, he was pretty busy. But he says, "Well, I'll tell you what I could do for you." And he he literally set us up on the edge of the river, and he had literally a dozen young kids from the neighborhood. Yeah. Basically create a, a, a driven hunt for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can tell you, I hit one bird <laughs> because I never had pheasants. No. Over like, my head this yeah. way, you know? It's a new experience. Oh, than- my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not just like the high house nine shot where you cover it, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, and I couldn't believe how many birds that they these kids were... You know, I mean, he knew this one area and he knew he could do it. He knew he's going to yeah. make some money from us. We yeah. were game. But I'm telling you what, we came out of there. We thought we were going to like, oh, this is good. As soon as we started seeing these things rocketing over our heads, yeah. I mean, we're shooting backwards. and twi- yeah. it, it was a con- So there, there's a skill level to that way beyond. Oh, you, 100%. 100%. You could, take, you could take our best wing shooters over pointed birds yeah. and reverse that. And they would struggle with that. And and maybe th- some of those shooters would struggle with, you know, yeah, you know, out in South Dakota with pheasants flying away. But a bird hey, coming at you, that, that's I've got a friend back in the UK. He's he's pretty well known and he's and he does some excellent YouTube videos. His name's Dave Carey. Dave Carey shooting. 
Oh, I've seen his stuff. He's an older guy. You're a little older, older guy. Yeah. Great sh- oh my God, Ron! This yeah. guy can shoot, and he's got yeah. one eye. One he's- eye? Yes. <laughs> he's sponsored by. I mean, I I met the chap. I, I used to do a lot of clay pigeon shooting, and I used to tour around Europe. I had a sponsorship with a cartridge company, and and I loved it. And 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 off I went around Europe shooting. And I met Dave, a lovely chap. Absolutely yeah. proper English gentleman, but he's massive into two things: a shooting and the conservation of shooting. Right, uh, it's a dying breed back in the UK. You've got all these, uh, you know, uh, P, you know, PC people trying to get rid of the shooting. Right, and into right. bringing young children into the, the 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 sort of shooting community. Right, hunting because it's a, a dying breed, a dying skill set. No, because I mean, a lot of people can be forgiven, you know, hunting men. They just think they're going to go out and kill things. That's not what it's all about. It's no. it's about conservation as well. Uh, right. it, this is our back garden, you know. I, I I when I kill birds, I'm I'm eating them, you know, as right. well. Um, right. And I and I have an active interest in, you know, how you keep that, you know, yeah, and the why and the how and yeah, like, that's in, our in, future. In the states here, I think I I I. I'm associated with in 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 an informal partnership with Pheasants Forever, yeah, and with Rough Grouse Society, yeah. And I think in the last twenty years, they're getting the point across that like you don't ever see anything they do that doesn't have the word habitat. Yes, right? because yeah. now it that's again where we're so different. We've got all this all this acreage, gazillion acres in the United States. Yeah, we've managed to screw it up, which is about the equivalent of anywhere where it's all private. Like everything in the UK is basically privately held. Fair enough, we've yeah. made our own mistakes with our we've made our mistakes with our habitat. And that message is, I think, finally coming through. And I I admittedly said on a podcast, I can't remember who I was talking to, but when I used to go to South Dakota to hunt, I just saw brown grass. I didn't I didn't look at the forbs and the flowering plants and the, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. there's the grass. Let's, I didn't, I, I guess I didn't appreciate it. And yeah. now that message, you're right. We're such a small community. We got to think about everything, whether it's, yeah. you know, carrying yeah. on the traditions, the habitat, the birds, yeah. whether yeah. You know, even, even things like we have the bird flu, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's, there's so many facets to, to, to care yeah. about here. Well, I, I, you know, I, I like the younger generation as well. You know, I, I think it's, I think, you know, it's all about education, you know, and, and, and uh, when you bring the, you know, if you've got someone like yourself or, or you know, like people like Dave back in the UK flying yeah. the flag, these are guys who have seen it, done it, got the T-shirt, understand what yeah. nature really is. Um, they're great ambassadors for the kids to know how to do it properly. Yeah. Uh, and I love that. I think that's yeah. a, a great message. You know, I, I served in, in the UK forces for 22 years in the Coast Guard Guards. You know, it's all about respect for others, uh, loyalty. And, 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 and I find that in the shooting community because they're honest people, you know, they're hardworking, honest people who love, you know, love the, the outdoors. Yeah, it's, it's like you could always get along with them. Oh, I mean, it's it's like you and I, we don't know each other. I feel like, you know, we'll be sending Christmas cards, you know, hundred percent. I got to ask you 20, you said 22 years in the service you were there. Yeah. I served with the Colston guards. Yeah. Yeah. I did uh, two tours, Afghan, a tour of Iraq, Bosnia, Northern Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoyed it. uh, Did did that, that had to encumber your, your shooting a little bit, or were there any opportunities (laughs) in any of those places? Well, well, different types of shootings. Well, yeah, not, not, that, not that kind of shooting. Um, no, I, well, my dad was a farmer, so so I, I as a young age, I, I was brought up, you know, in in. So he was my ambassador. He showed me all right. about, right. you know, the countryside and uh, and then and then the, the sort of gun dog side was, what was it now? I was sort of in my late teens, and I met a guy called Gary Smith. Who was who was on the England gun dog team and and saw I had a spaniel and he, he sort of pulled me to one side. As you know, the shooting community 
you know, they like to offer a little advice. And oh, yeah. <laughs> he says, hey, kid, he says, are you interested in, in, in learning a little bit more about how to handle your dog? Or I went, yeah, brilliant. And then, you know, ever since then, we always stayed in touch. And, 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 and when I was at home, I was back on the farm with my dad. And, uh, and I, he'd be looking after my dogs while I were away. And then I'd, I'd sort of pick up from there. But and and then I got a post in at um, at Catrick tr training sort of drill sergeants, what we call all arms drill wing, and it gave me some stability in life. So yeah. it was kind of a, a course run Monday to Friday, which I was an instructor. So I I went home regularly, and and I, and yeah. then I, I had my dog. So, so um, it wasn't it did it didn't knock you out of the game for twenty two years. No, no, yeah. I was I was always I always I mean I always kept my foot in, and then and you know when I had some leave, I'd I'd, I'd buy a couple of days shooting, and 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 yeah. I'd get invites from people, and mm -hmm. so you know I, I, if I weren't shooting the other stuff, I'd be shooting pheasants. It was yeah. like I was always <laughs> shooting somewhere. It's a lot of shoot. How's your ears? How's your hearing? All right. What did you say? Pardon? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Um. Yeah. It's fine, mate. Fine. All good. So yeah. you mentioned when we talked last last week. I, I want to get into some training stuff, but I'll, sure. I'm gonna save that. You, you've hunted in some other countries because the UK is. I don't want to say it's only a couple kinds of hunting, but there's really not a lot. It's it's the the drivens and the rough shooting. But I, I talked to a fellow in the UK who's he called it, he was part of a reserve where it was just four or five buddies that knew a farmer and they could hunt that land. Um, what about outside of the UK? It, did You've got to hunt outside of the UK, right? Yeah, well, I, I've got a good friend of mine uh, who, who's a, an Italian friend. And uh, and again, I met him on on the um, on the clay shooting circuit. Yeah. We we got uh, we we got teamed up together and 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 as you do we got chatting and he said oh you're my friend now he said you come shooting with me as in his broken English and yeah. and uh, I ended his up hands, his hands got to be moving. his hands were explaining a lot of stuff here <laughs> and um, no I I got an invite to Romania uh, where I wow. did some boar shooting and some wildfowl so duck shooting. Yeah, and and listen, it, the land he owns in Romania is ridiculous. I mean, it was oh my god, we were just driving for hours to get where we needed to be, you know where, uh, and 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 we went duck shooting. I have never, and I'm sure there's places in the states like this, but I have never, not certainly not in the UK, seen as many ducks as he showed me that day. Really? Oh my I god! Even, I don't think I could find Romania on a map. I mean, I, it's got to be what? It's got to be east of Germany, right? It's, it's, it's kind of, it's yeah, it's it, it's between Germany and Russia, kind of that way on. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and he's an Italian, so he, he's an Italian guy. He's an Italian guy. Bought some back back in back in the fifties. Wow. Bought 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 some land in Romania for cheap to the you know for acreage to the. They were telling me how much he paid in U.S. dollars for it. Right. Uh, but it but it wasn't expensive, and um, and he farm and he now farms that that area. And obviously, he he, he then got a shooting lodge and built the shooting lodge. And wow. and a good friend of mine called Dean Gibbs, an excellent shot. He, me and him get invites there regularly. He he, he um, sends me messages. When you're coming out duck shooting next or boar shoot? I mean, interestingly, where you just mentioned, he 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 went into this local village, drove up. Mm -hmm. And just randomly rallied up about twelve kids with empty plastic bottles, per stone in them, so they used them as a rattlers, and they were the beaters. So he basically <laughs> paid them like ten dollars for the day, <laughs> and, and said, and, "And so these kids are like in jeans and trainers, you right. know, fighting through the the woods. Bear yeah. in mind there are boars, you know, <laughs> but like." The proper units, and we're we're stood with these shotguns. We're twelve gauge. We're slug. You know these yeah. slug. They're like a three, only a three shot. Right. And, I'm, and I'm stood in this fire break, listening to these kids. You know, maybe at what five hundred meters ahead of us, but you yeah. can very lightly hear the echo through the trees of them. Oy, 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 you know, rattling their plastic <laughs> bottles. <laughs> And you're waiting for these boar to, you know, shoot through the woods. Yeah. You, you ain't got long. They're on you. 
And, <laughs> and boy, they ain't stopping for nothing. They'll, you know, if they hit you, they'll break your leg. As you know, they'll they'll kill you maybe. You know, so yeah, they can certainly they can certainly do some damage. Yeah, yeah that, I wouldn't want to. I I'd want, be, I'd rather get clipped by an NFL player than a boy. Exactly. exactly. He ain't yeah. gonna come back and gore you. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm standing there thinking, you know, look again. I've I've been on tours and I'm thinking, you know, th- I've been in some pretty shady areas, but <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> you know, waiting yeah. for ball to come through the woodland. You're getting but, a flashback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah a bush could be running across your sight. Yeah, yeah. I, that's kind of odd good. that. They used a, they like 12 gauge slug for that, huh? For the boar. Well, I mean, he had a rifle. He just, he, you know, these were his spare rifle. Uh, yeah. Well, I had a European firearms certificate, but rather than bringing his own guns through the airports, which yeah. can be a bit of a nightmare, yeah. he was like, look, don't worry about it. I've got guns for you. So little did we know we were just going to get a 12 gauge with three slugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be okay. He said, you'll be okay. Uh, wow. What's, I, I, I said, what, "Oh, go ahead." Sorry, I said to him, "I said, um, what if we sh- we shoot one of the young boys?" He's like, "Oh, don't worry, we've got we've got another nine others." You know, he's like, "The very blase." You know, he's like, oh, "There's no problem. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> They'll be far enough behind him. And if we lose one, you know, yeah. there's a bunch yeah. of kids in the village. Nice, yeah. nice. We'll yeah. edit that part out. No, Sorry. I don't edit anything <laughs> out. Um, I, I always wonder about game laws when people go somewhere." Were you able to, I know not every hunt and not every place you're at that you've been to, or nor have I, sometimes I'll go somewhere on a hunt and I'm not bringing any meat home. Can you transport meat in in Europe? Is, is uh, there a bunch of stipulations on it? Because in the UK, a farmer could actually sell what they shoot on the market. I've seen that in the market. Yeah, yeah. I think within, within the country, I, I personally not done it myself. I've not yeah. seen it. I mean, if you do quarry... In the cut, like you know, again, I, I used to flog uh, a few, a few, bra- a few brace to to a couple of, you know, pub owner who wanted a brace, and you know, right. I go shoot in and and sell him in. He'd eat them themselves. So, right, you know, between between us within the country, that's fine. But right, but had I been in Romania and I'd, and I'd, I wanted to bring some back, I, I I don't know how that would be if I'm honest. Yeah. Just couple, yeah, Another? no. There's no wild. Is there any wild pigs in in the UK? I don't. There, there are, but the 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 there's a small area in in South what they're intro, what they introduced probably a few decades back now. Um, uh, but I, I, they, they don't shoot them. They don't really? shoot them. They are wild, but huh. um, uh, and it and it's a it's a very small area. But um, way back when, obviously, yeah, they they they, they hunted them out of existence, but. Um, right. Right, but uh, not now, not really. No. When um, getting on a little bit of, of training, it's the one thing that has seemed to run true every, and I've probably had maybe five people from the UK, um, and I think one fellow from a from Australia way back in the day, which we know is just a an arm of the UK, kinda, you yeah. know, or was it's, it's where you <laughs> sent all your criminals. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, the use of e-collars is not, I don't want to say it's somebody, I've heard somebody say it's forbidden or it's just not done. Um, is that, is there any truth to that? Or yeah, I mean, talk to there doesn't seem to use e-collars. No, I mean, I, it's something I was going to actually pick up. I mean, I, I watched a lot of your your, your videos and there's right. sort of the introduction of e-collars and things like that. And mm-hmm. um, at, at the UK, you will, you, you, I have seen it probably once, you know, but that were a long time ago. Um, it, it's not a, it's not, not a thing we really, we really use. Right. Um, I, I personally wouldn't use them. Um, if I were training my dogs, um, I mean, look, I, I, this is how I kind of think of it. This is this is when I when I would predominantly train spaniels, so cocker right. spaniels and springer spaniels. Yep. So, so so before I start training, I always say to myself, right, what is it I want? I mean, there's an open question: What is a gun dog? What do I want this dog to be? What what do I do? Because it's a tool for me to a bond with, but it's a tool for me to hunt. 
Right. So if, if let's say I'm I, I do some rough shooting and I, I I walk up some sort of elephant grass and a, a bit of scrubland and I and I flush a couple of pheasants. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably say to myself, right, well, I want it to quarter ground, so hunt ground, hunt hunt the game in front of me. Uh, and I want it to turn on a stop whistle, you know, when I want it to control it, to move, you know, wherever we're gonna, wherever we're gonna clear and hunt. Right. I want it to be steady to the flush. So the what we call a contact flush, so when you're flushing a pheasant, a bird. Right. Uh, and then once it's steady, I want to shoot the bird. I want that dog then to watch the bird away and mark it. Yep. And then on my command, I call it out and retrieve the, the bird tenderly to hand. Yeah. Now, now I know what I want. So now I know what I want. I know how to structure my training. Right. So if I get a pup from eight, eight, you know, eight weeks old from wherever I buy it, mm -hmm. I would, you know, start letting it be in a puppy, bond with it, stroke it, touch it, you know, starting to build a rapport with it. Um, as it started to get, you know, uh, throw it the odd and retrieve. I mean, a, a, as a rule of thumb, you know, most hunting dogs are bred to retrieve things. Should be. Yeah, I, yeah exactly. I, I wouldn't overdo it if, if at a young age, um, if it retrieves, do it odd, you know, once in a blue moon, put it to bed. You know, little and often. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't overtrain it. Um, and, and, and you know, one thing I always noticed about training gun dogs, people would ask me, say, how do I do this? Or how do I do this with a dog? And I think, you know, I came to sort of conclusion, half of the time, it's not the dog, the gun dog that needs training. It's the trainer that needs training. Yeah. So it's almost like train the trainer rather right. than train the gun dog. Right. Because they don't have the, the wealth of knowledge and know what pitfalls they can fall upon. It's often right. too late. They've already probably introduced it to game too early, or they've made it gun shy by introducing the, the short of whatever mistake they've made. It's yeah. not looking ahead. Now, I always, when I always train my dogs, train them for success, leave on a positive, and 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 it's like that, it's forging the environment so that it can't fail. So for argument's sake, if let's say you were doing, I don't know, some a young dog, you were gonna do some basic throw, you know, having the dog sat to one side, throw a dummy. You wouldn't go to an area where there's lots of game. No, you know. So for distractions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of that's what I mean by sort of forging your environment, you know, setting yourself up for success. You're gonna do, you know. Even I would even leave my dogs in the the, the truck. Yep. Go and practice it without the dog. You know, whatever action I wanted to do, mm -hmm. then go and get me dog. So uh, it's constructive. You know, kind of know what you're doing. The 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 difference is that that's I mean that's the way every gun dog or every, you know even a house dog should be trained. Yeah. But I don't know why we put so much emphasis on the collar. I like a lot of people go like, oh, I, I just want to be able to know where my dog's going. Okay, well, you can use that function on some of our equipment. Yeah. You know? I think that's a nice, that's a peace of mind thing. Mm. But th these people, and I'm, I'm saying us, yeah, they, they think when they get the collar that that's how they train the dog. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I got the collar. Yeah. The collar obviously speaks canine. Mm. You know? Yeah, and, and they yeah yeah, and they're not doing yeah. the basic. They're in a hurry. The yeah. dog might be too young for a hunting season, but their buddy took their six month old last year. Six yeah. month old got a dog. Now this guy's got a five month old dog. He's yeah. like, I wonder if I should take him this year. And they literally think that that transmitter is talking to the dog without ever teaching the dog anything. Yeah, about it. You know, well, I, I also think of it like this. How far can a gun, a shotgun shoot, a, a, you know, its quarry effectively? I would probably say 30, 40 yards. Yeah. yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. yeah. So realistically, your dog shouldn't be any further out than 30 or 40 yards. Right. So right. By, in the, by... And certainly in the flushing dog. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah in a yeah, flushing yeah. dog, you know, like, why would you have it further out? Because even if it flushes the bird, you can't sure. shoot it. It's right. too far out. So you've, you need the dog within a workable area in front of you so that <clears throat> should it do what it's supposed to do, and that's flush the birds, you're within a killing range to kill, you know, to, sh to make that kill. Right, right. And that the dog, you know, the dogs within, you know, eyesight of you, theoretically, if the, right. uh, depending if there's, you know, bushes or trees in the way, but theoretically it's, it's close by. Right. So I, I always got my dogs to quarter out and then come back and kind of touch my feet and then go back out, Qu quarter the area around me. And that's something you're doing with the puppy, no birds, no gun, just over and over yeah. walks. Yeah. And yeah. the it's not like you had to use a collar. You The dog just, you use a whistle, he comes back. That's comes it. Back. He, he yeah. just, he's developing his range and his pattern which for that dog is, let's say, a 30-yard yeah. a arch or a yeah. 40-yard arch or something like yeah. that. Yeah. You're working in unison, aren't you? You're working as a team. And, it, and, and, and from that young age, as you, you know, you're walking them through a bit of elephant grass. So you like a young dog doesn't want to be taking on hard cover. It'll put them off. Yeah. So, so, so keep it nice and light. So do it, do, it, do it so it gets and builds that confidence. Right. And as you, as you, as the dog builds confidence in you, uh, you'll build confidence in the dog. You can then take it onto that next stage as it develops. You know, it's, right. it's, a, it's, you know, we, we spoke last time and about a lot of people taking younger dogs on shoots, right. like this rush to train a gun dog. Right. And, and then almost saying, right, well, if I go through these, these series of, uh, 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 Miles, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then that's it. I'm I'm done. Well, you know, I, again, I had trial dogs, two and a half year old. I was always out training, and it and I would even do the basic stuff if it were healing, you know, uh, some straight line blind retrieves. It, mm -hmm. it always refreshing and going on, keeping it exciting and different. Maybe even going back, confirming some training. Uh, uh, in the summer, you can go into um, water retrieves, right. going over obstacles. So, I mean, I, where in the UK, we have quite small fields. And those fields have a linear feature, an edge row. So to, if you shot a bird on the other side of the edge, trying to get a dog to push through that line and trust you once you give it the line you want to cast it out on, Right, can be difficult because that it's it's a dog's nature to to follow the linear feature, follow the line up. Sure. So I used to practice things like that. So you know, putting a bird, a blind bird over a, over a linear feature like an edge, yeah. and then when I straight lined it and cast it, it had the confidence to go through those lines until you right. know it came over and retrieved the quarry or whatever it might be. So you, I, I was always trying to think of situations in the field. What would I come across? What barriers could I come across? Mm -hmm. And try to emulate them in your training. Right. Are, I, I'm sure this, is, I know there's a contingency of pointing dogs, but I, I would think certainly the Spaniels and the Labradors, that's, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a flushing dog that range has got to be within gun range because we're looking for a dog that's once he does smell it, makes it, yeah. makes it go. Yeah. What, what do you see in pointing dogs over there? Or do you, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I had one pointing dog. I had a wild, uh, Vizsla. Uh, Vizsla. <laughs> Vizsla. Yeah. Vizsla. Um, uh, I, I thought they were great dogs. Uh, obviously, I, I, you know, I used to let it quarter a lot further out. It's sure. ran a little bit further. Um, uh, and when it used to go on the point, it, you know, it, it were indicating. So, again, trying to set the conditions so it's kind of going upwind, you know, if it, it always trying to put the conditions in its favour. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I enjoyed working with it. It was great. Um yeah. but, it's not as big as the Labrador scene in the UK, and it's not, right. not as big as uh, the Cockers. But that there are a very lot, you know, there are a lot of 
uh, HPR at some point retriever yeah. people in the UK and the, the, there's trials back in the UK. Right. Uh, it's just not as big as and popular as the other breeds. Right. Um, when you, if, if you oh, had to, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I think that it's topography, you know, the, the, the lay of the land lends itself, I would think more to spaniels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and if you live out like for living in the woods where I go woodcock and grouse hunting. Yeah. Um, some people will have their pointer once he's learned how to handle that bird, they'll yeah. give him a little bit more leeway. But like if you lived in North Dakota, you're used to your dog running two, three. I mean, you can see for, you know, you can see for two sections of land. Once sure. the dog's trained, it's not a big deal. Yeah. And I can see that. I think you, you, that's, that's, that's the point, you know, of having a gun dog is where, where do you live in the world? Yeah. What, what's the areas you're hunting? Mm -hmm. So you, you're basically buying a breed to do the job where you are. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, when I, I think when I've been looking in and talking to you guys and I can see the advantages of hunter point retrievers. Yeah. In, the, in, a, in a lot of cases. Yeah. We, yeah, do, yeah. we do have just bigger, bigger ground, just Mass, bigger, massive, bigger, massive yeah. in some cases, yeah. massive miles, you know, yeah, miles and miles. Um, yeah. But yeah. still getting that dog under control. I, I, I want to go back to the e-collar and this is, no. I don't want to say this is a theory of mine because it's not my theory, but I think we, well, I'm going to start with a question. You've got a new dog. You, you work on your bonding, some drills. When would you consider saying, okay, it's, I'm going to start getting this dog some situations where I can shoot. Do you introduce shooting separately? Do you introduce birds separately? Do you, you yeah, know, so I think that's another I, I mistake. We that, make. Another yeah, I would break that down. All at one time, we do, we end up doing this. Yeah, where like a new person comes to our club, and somebody goes, "I got some extra birds. You want to put your dog on a bird?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, how, how do you parse it out? Where where you introduce that? Because that's the two big things. Eventually. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, where you've just mentioned them, you 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 said them in a t in in its own topic. You know, introduction to the gunshot. Mm -hmm. To me, that's introduction to the gunshot. Don't confuse it with anything else. Right. So let's concentrate again. Going back to positive reinforcement. Also, going back to setting the environment. So I need to know whether this dog can get used to is ready right. for introduction to the shot. So that might be where you, I get a friend with a starter pistol. Yeah. He's at one end of the field, and I've got this young dog, you know, he's a good 30, 40 yard out. Mm -hmm. And he'll get face the starter pistol away. So it sort of dumbs that nullifies the, the starter pistol. Yeah. Back. And, and watch me study the dog's reaction. Right. Right. Pray. Good boy. Good boy. Good girl. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, on that reaction w is, you know, what I would do the next step. Now, if it was nervous or if it showed uh, some anxiety, I'd end it there. Right. That's, I'm done because he's not ready. He's and not ready. Yep. We, have to, we have to look at doing something slightly different and focus my energies on doing some new training or whatever that might be. Right. But, you know... It, in short, to answer your question, take each stage by stage. So if it's if you're introducing it to birds or quarry, do that. Think about how you're going to achieve it. Think about where you're going to do it. Think about the quarry you're going to use. I mean, when I, I'm thinking back now, uh, I used to have feral pigeons. I used to buy feral pigeons from a chap. Yeah. And I, what we what we call back in the UK, dizzy pigeons up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you used to shake the reds and you could put the reds under the wings and plant yep. them. Yep. And so, uh, you know, you would, and, and so then would you would have this fairly youngish dog uh, quartering and, and it finds something. And then after a while, it'd flush the birds and you give it the sick command and put yourself in a position where, you know, you, you can control. So yep. maybe the dogs on your right hand side 
the birds on the left, you're in between. So you can, you know, if you needed to step in, you can step in. Yeah. Um, and 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 it, again, if they reacted positively, you know, praise them. Good boy, you found something. Well done. <laughs> you yeah. know, now we now the dog's thinking, hey, this is what it's all about. Dad wants me to go through the grass. He has oh. no idea that you're going to shoot one of those someday. Exactly, exactly. Right. But you're it's building like, up. This is cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And and but that's it. That's how you put. It's like a puzzle. You're putting it all together. Right. And, and as it grows up and matures, and its brain matures and it's a force of habit you know it's so like oh it's another day we're doing the same thing again right. but in a different way it, it it becomes more confident and 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 has confidence in you yeah i can tell you i i you, you watch some of the upland institute the, the clips i could send to you yeah and in our in our gun intro there there is a popular method that people use it used to be only used, and I, you know, I could be wrong on this. Anybody can write me an email. But back in the day, if they had a dog that they were struggling with gunfire, yeah. And let's say it was just they weren't doing it too early. It was just like I said, a sensitive dog, right? Yeah, yeah. What they would then do is use the birds as the stimulus for the chase. Yeah. And then have that distant gunfire. So he hears it, but he's so like, oh, there's a bird, you know. Took its mind off it, yeah. Yeah, and that became, that was kind of like a way that you dealt with it yeah. if the dog was a little sensitive. And yeah. now I see this this craze here where, I don't want to say everybody, but a big portion of us always introduce the bird with the gun because they're afraid they're going to, but like yeah. you said, you can introduce the gun like Justin does with the distraction method. After a while... He's just on his puppy walk, you know, whatever age puppy it is, and yeah. he just keeps hearing yeah. shots. It doesn't mean it's a bird. No. And that way you don't the the sound does not mean chase, right? Well, this is the, well you could Justin could be out with his dogs one day. Right. And, and and a guy next to you hunting close by, and he could be shooting a bird. Right. So just because the dog hears a shot doesn't it doesn't mean go <laughs> exactly yeah exactly yeah and I and I think that's we struggle with that here yeah and, and I think it's again I, I I one of my sponsors is Garmin and they make the the best dog training equipment there is yeah and I'm not trying to knock their sales down I'm just trying to get people to buy it later do yeah. all, do all the yeah. work first and then yeah. then incorporate the collar if you yeah. know. Because the yeah. collar should you to me should be just like teaching a child multilingual languages. It yeah, should, it should only mean what it's already been taught. Yeah. Well, I I I often Ron I I often use the analogy when I was speak just like what you just said. You hit the nail on the head. You know, think you know all these dogs have got personalities. They'll they'll all train slightly quicker or sm slower than others. But let's say it's like your children. You know, you wouldn't say to the average five-year-old kid, right, go and teach me, you know, geometry or whatever it was, because right. they're just not adapt. They're not they're not developed enough to, right. to take that on. A dog or a young dog in no. its puppy phase is exactly the same as asking that question. Right. And especially when you when you start talking about you know, introduction of the gun and also, you know, uh, the flush and the shooting of the quarry, that's more advanced training, gun dog training. Yeah. So, I mean, look, my advice uh, it, 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 for what it's worth, it, you know, is it, don't rush it. Judge each dog in its own merits. Take your time. Um, think about the training you're doing. You know, think about what you want to do before you do it. Yeah. Uh, and even seek advice. Just say, look, you know, I was thinking about doing this uh, about introduction to the shot. What do you think? And they might give you another view on it, but yeah. there's no rush. But if you just do it on a whim, you know, you, you, you're not thinking about your situation awareness. You're not thinking about, hang on, what could go wrong? You know, right. if, like you said, a buddy will say to you, come on, I've got a couple of birds. You want to do There are so many variables where that could go wrong. And yeah. once you yeah. spoil your dog like that, it's going to be a lot of hard work to to get that back. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've, th I think I told you 
my, uh, it, I think at some point I'll get credit for this after I'm dead. <laughs> the introduction of some things too early is like my analogy that my dad didn't leave a Playboy magazine laying around for me when I was five years old. Yes. He knew. Brilliant. Actually, <laughs> when I hit puberty, I'd probably be looking for the Playboy magazine. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs, all we have with dogs is instincts, right? That's, yes. that's what they come to us with. Yeah. And so, we do it naturally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you take it slow and, and don't sh show him the centerfold when he's six weeks old. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You might you might have a really good dog that listens yeah. to you, thinks the world of you. Yeah. Eventually says, "Hey, Dad's pretty cool." When I got older, he took me out to see the centerfold. You yeah. know, that's it. When you're old dogs like us, you're experts. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Then we're pros. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then we hide them. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's so true. I mean, it's so relatable in other things. You know, yeah. gun training. You, and actually, when you sit down and you think about it, it ain't actually all that difficult. It's quite a lot of common sense. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, it just can be daunting for people uh, who have never done it before or, or not trained many gun dogs or made a mistake before, and that really off puts right. them. Um, you know, you just can't keep doing the same thing wrong over and over again. You're going to get the same result. You've got to just right. think of new ways of... You know, it's, I, it, it was same as things like um, getting a dog to straight line, you know, when you're sending it out on a retrieve, rather than hunting all the way up to somewhere. Right. I used to, I used to get like a barrier. I used to make some fences on my land. Yeah. And put the dummy at the end. So it couldn't go either way. It's like a wall and encourage right. it just to keep straight lining it. And then that fence got bigger and bigger and wider and wider until there was not a fence there. But and it, you know it great. through the I, exactly it's like repetition. But I would just like thinking outside the box as you know how can I get this particular dog to do this right. particular task? Um you know that the, there are so many tools out there. Yeah I, I we've heard of people here <clears throat> If the time of year is right, and to your point, like there's there's a lot of ways to train dogs, but there's more dog personalities than there's ways to train them. It's consistency yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. But we've heard people say, if you can mow mow a line in the grass, yes. If you or yeah. if you've got a field that's you could just take a brush hog and just mow that line, It'd be the same thing. It, Linear. Yeah. It would it would keep that dog like well, I know it's down there and. Yeah. I won't use my search right now. I'm using my, my That's command. It. That's it, yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I've always been amazed at, and this is because I'm on my second cocker, and this one's very young. <clears throat> and to work on that range, to you know, I would say her, and this is just me, in, in, the, in the, the English cocker, the range is kind of built in, but you could let it get sloppy, and I did that with my first one. Yeah, I yeah. I did. I think I literally took it hunting a little too soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, instead of working like her range when she was a puppy, I was like, oh, she's gonna look at her. Yeah, well, she wasn't going far because she's like walking with me. Be with you, yeah. And and once I think I took her hunting a little too soon, and she found out that oh, I could find birds farther out. Well, we'll get there. And I let her get a little too. So to keep that dog in range that's what you're working on when they're a puppy and then those line drills because those line drills are not to teach them to hunt bigger they're there just to teach them in this case with this command yeah it's a straight it's a straight line yeah you want them out retrieving not hunting right but you know if you're saying at this stage once you've shot the quarry it's hopefully marked it if it's not it's blind yeah when i send you out on a direction Right. I want you to go out until I stop you in the hunt area and you can hunt in right. that area. Right. But I mean, interestingly, what you said about an English cocker there, you know, they're, they're, they're renowned, you know, once they, they're, they're extremely intelligent dogs, once they get a whiff of what it's all about, mm -hmm. they'll push you and push you and push you. And it <laughs> takes a real handler to, to rein that back in. Um, uh, you know, you'll find in England that they, they use a whistle, you know, a, a right. whistle for command. So it uh, generally it's a, like a double pit for a turn, uh, one whistle blast for a stop. Yep. Uh, and there's different Acme whistles and 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 
you know, once you know the dog's got that energy and the and the drive uh, and the bold, you, you, you know, you might have to turn them a little bit sooner so you're right. on top of them. If, rather than them getting to the limit and them failing, you know, right. turn them a little bit earlier. If you need to get, hey, you know, give them a little reminder, hey, you know, listen to me. You know, often I've had a dog where it's starting to cook up or it's, you know, I'm getting close to a lot of birds and a lot of scent. I'll yeah. stop it. Yeah. I'll stop the dog and just let it have a minute and calm down mm -hmm. and then bring it back into me and send it back out. Yeah. You don't you don't need to keep rolling it up, rolling it up until it's failed, you know, or it runs in or. Yeah. One of the mistakes I know I made already and maybe uh, Ben can help me out. <laughs> oh, ben, <laughs> I might, no, sure. Yeah, um, I found her going behind me a lot, right? Oh, right. It's okay. Yeah, and I don't know. I I I somehow want to give her credit. Like, is she hung up on something that we crossed, and I should turn with her, or no? I'm thinking I'm going down. I've got a quarter mile of a field to walk, and yeah. I want her in front of me. Yeah. There really should be no use in her going behind me, no. if if she, if her search was efficient, yeah. You know? yeah. And and I, I I guess and again I she's she's probably never going to have an e collar on her. I I I've I have collars. I've trained dogs for high level competition with no e collar ever in their life. Yeah, I know it's doable, <clears throat> but I'm a little intimidated by this little. She just almost moves too fast for me. You yeah, know? I mean, well, so it's interesting. So, so that when the dog's quartering in front of you, then it'll sort of t turn and then what come walk behind you and then shoot well, out. It's or? almost always on one of her, like to her far left or far right cast. Yeah, then she'll make this loop behind me and I'll see uh -oh. her coming right up behind my legs. Yeah, I don't know if there's something she found some success somewhere, it wow. feels like the right thing, for, but I. I I know I probably didn't start her out with short puppy walks and you know yeah. I didn't stop her from doing it at some point because it it seems to be a bit of a pattern with her right now. Yeah. See that's what I was talking about there just earlier. You know yeah. as it, as you cast it out and it's going the side where you think it's going the the moment it gets say halfway there to, you know turn it instead of letting it go right out to come back turn it to uh, turn it soon so rather than allowing her to hunt out just turn the dog sooner see and maybe walk back as it's turning just keep okay. walking back so it comes in front of you and she'll get the idea of she'll get the, exactly being forward. yeah I, i've got i've got some work to do on that one because yeah, yeah. it's kind of uh in believe me, pointing dogs will do that a lot also they they shouldn't yeah. you know yeah. i mean yeah. when when Justin controls the range of his pointers with a turn whistle. That's exactly yeah. how it's he lets them go. And if he feels they're getting too far, he turns yeah. them. Yeah. And then it, now they're turning. Yeah. And now he's getting closer by the fact that the dog is now turning. Yeah. And if, he, if it stretches out again, he gives it the other turn. Yeah, that's know? it. Yeah. That's it. And, that's how done. Yeah. And, you know, watching him run a dog in the field, like it, it looks like a ballet, you know? Yeah. And yeah. my, you know, my dogs still very occasionally, it's probably something I just didn't pay enough attention to on those early walks and yeah. set it up to where the dog, his reference point is always me yeah. behind him, not him behind me. Yeah. You probably yeah. find though that we, you know, we, it, you know, when you say we just in doing the turn whistle, you know, th this is the point about not moving on too soon, you know, yeah, get it nailed down. Get it, yeah. get it, you know, like basically concrete that you know when 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 you quarter in the ground, there's no way it's going to take any sort of liberties, you know, right. and, and that just gives you that. Uh, you then when you go out in the finished product for that dog, when you go out, you're going to be able to enjoy your shooting and not concentrate on training the dog. Yeah, and like trying. That goes to, back to taking your time. On you know, yeah, um, you know. I know people who have been successful with it. I I don't I haven't been with them to watch it, but yeah. to me, like a six month old dog is just too young to expect good hunting over. It's just, it yeah. can be done, but it's just 
I, th- I think that's a rush. I think that's a rush. At six months, I wouldn't be going out with, with, with any dog shooting over it, hunting with it. At six right. months. And that's like, what I've got. Like a trained dog, I wouldn't do it. Right. And that's what I've gotten from everybody that I've talked to from the UK. Would I mean, they didn't say six months, but I heard most of them say like, no, the dog's going to have to be at least a year old. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure I've, I, I would, I take my, when I, when I eventually f- get to that stage, they're probably just over 13, 14 month old, 13 yeah. month old. Yeah. And I'm, I'm at probably in a rabbit pen or I'm on rabbits. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my first quarry. That's my first thing I'm going to shoot. Oh, you'll that they'll be into rabbits. Yeah, ra- ra- rabbit. I find with spaniels because rabbits leave more of a tr- more contact, more trail. You know, I, I'll right. I, I can go and shoot rabbits. I get, I get a, I get more success. And a, and I would even put a dog. You know, I tra- I find it easier to train a dog in a rabbit pen. Really? Yeah, it's it's more controlled. Wow, uh, I've, I've heard so- of rabbit pens. I know beagles. Yeah. Beagle trailers use rabbit pens all the yeah. time. There's some great videos if you you know if you look, you know the usage of rabbit pens in the UK. Um, you know there's a, um, a, a, a another big name in the UK. Ian Openshaw has got massive rabbit pen near his house. He'll train most of his dogs in there. You know that you know in the great tools to have if you if you're fortunate enough to have land and and and, and a rabbit pen, you can speed the training up considerably. Wow. What, uh, I mean, not to, to the inch and to the foot, but about how big of a, a pen would that be roughly? Well, um, I mean, roughly a, a decent one. Uh, you could probably get away minimum wise. You'd probably get away be, you know, 50 meters by 50, something like that is a decent ish. 150 feet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, you, you can do smaller. I mean, the idea of here is to, you, you would build up, um, some conifers, you know, conifer trees. Sure. sure. Not hard brush, because remember you're training young dogs, and the and the rabbits will hide in these brushes. Right. So, and the, the rest of it's kind of light elephantish grass, like low down. So you, the chances of when you cast the dog into this this brush to get a flush are extremely high because they're only hiding in these certain spots. Right. Well, you 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 you're guaranteed that that contact flush that you look. So if you go out in the wilderness, you know, hey, where is it? We don't know. We've got to hunt for it first, and right. and also you're taking a young dog out in the real world, where again, lots of things can go wrong. Now, lots of things can go wrong in a rabbit pen if you don't know what you're doing with a dog, but it's more controlled. It's more setting that that flush up and what the handler should be doing once it does. Yeah. And I mean, I've, had, I've had dogs where, you know, they, they've not had a lot of boldness, let's say. They're not the boldest dog in the world. Right. Oh, and, and just to sort of let them know what it's all about, I'll put them in a rabbit pen and they'll, they'll flush a rabbit and I'll let them have a little chase, a little chase. Yeah. Because once they get that in their nose, in their nose, oh, you yeah. know, it, it's yeah. like cocaine to them. It's it's the it's, Playboy magazine again. Oh, it's the Playboy magazine again. Yeah. So, but that that then oh, this is what it's about. Then you've got to rein that in, and then you 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 channel it better than just. But that for me is a a, a decent way to rile a dog up if you want a little bit more drive out of them. If right. it was right. a little bit more placid, that tends to that's worked for me in the past. Where generally is a rule of thumb, though, if you've done all the basics right up to that stage, yeah, that should come naturally. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 that, like you said, that that rabbit pen could be used for several reasons. And one of them, a dog yeah. you want to have a dog with success, get some chase built up, but yeah. controlled. And I and it would go back to being a flusher yeah. in a smaller area. That rabbit's not going to take that dog out for a two hundred yard run. Yeah, exactly. It's always going to be in that. Of, yeah, yeah. Kind of and then, you know what? They're great for as well. There's another thing. When one, I mean, this is later on when they're more advanced. But imagine you've got the rabbit pen, and at what at one end you've got a retrieve, and the dog and you are at the other end. 
and yeah. you cast the dog out on a retrieve, the other rabbits are distractions. Yeah. So so it's also training the dog to just yeah. do what you want it to do. Yeah. Now obviously ignore, ignore everything on the way to the retrieve. Exactly. You gotta go yeah. retrieve. Right. So, even, I though, mean, even though that dog knows there might be rabbits there. Oh right. yeah. And they will. And the, and look, and, and rabbit pens do. I mean, look, I wouldn't necessarily advise everyone rushing off, but rabbit pens also uh, have their downfalls. Um, because you start taking that dog in there every week, it knows what's coming, and right, it knows right. it's in a rabbit pen. It's a it's uh, a tool. It's not it's a, a tool. Yeah, exactly. not a lifestyle. It's not yeah. a lifestyle. Yeah, no, 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 no. But that's funny. But, yeah. I've never heard anybody use. You know, again, I, I wouldn't do that with a pointing dog with rabbits. You know, yeah. because I'm not trying to get a flush out of the dog. Yeah. Although my yeah. dog will point rabbits. You know, when they're yeah. when they're in a spot. Um, but I, yeah, I never heard anybody talk about, you know, getting them, getting them used to, you know, rabbits when yeah. eventually well, you're probably not going to be, I mean, a good chance is you may not be ever hunting rabbits with that dog because, no, no, no. yeah. And, and for me, it's irrelevant as well. Right. Well, really in a way, because whether it be a bird, whether it be a rabbit, it needs to have it, the control. So I, I'm actually, I, I don't really care. I didn't even put some bird, you know, some runners in there with clipped wings. Sure. But, so it's irrelevant to me what the quarry is. It's just having that control on the dog and the dog trusting you mm -hmm. and, and not him doing his own thing. Now, yeah. if you can control it whilst all that's going off, hey, any day you go into the, the fields, yeah. uh, you know, it, it you, you can handle it because it's it, yeah. there's not so much a concentration of it. Yeah, yeah. That I've I've always like when I have watched. What was that fella you said that um, the older fella uh, that hey, has Dave Kerry? Yeah, yeah Kerry. Um, yeah. When you watch, and I have I I can't remember when it was, but it was recently. It it popped up in a feed, and I I watched probably seven or eight of them. Yeah, and but the part I'm like besides like his unbelievable shooting ability yes. when you see the people gathered up with their dogs you know i'm always at amaze because i could take six of my friends with their dogs and they couldn't get together at a tailgate without five dogs running around and all those yeah. dogs just are like oh we're just waiting yeah we're, it's like they're so well behaved yeah you know? It's the control element, isn't it? It's, yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, look, maybe that's the differences between the UK or or or, or America. I, I don't know. Like I say, I think you know, like a military operation. Let's say, um, yeah. you know, you you've got to have your mission, and your mission is this is what I want my dog to be. Right. So I want it to have manners. I want it to walk at heel. I want to have control. I right. want it to walk the ground tenderly to hand. You know, and deliver quarry tenderly to hand. So right. now, once you now I've started get you know just going through some topics. We've we've got headers to titles. So right. now I've got to teach it how to be a pup. Well, let's do this one. Concentrate on that. Mm -hmm. Now I've got that nailed down. Right. Let's start thinking about moving on to this. Yeah. And depending on its age is depending when these categories fit in for the right. dog. Now, if my dog was, you know. It had no manners and running about and doing its own thing. I certainly won't be introducing it into a shoot. Right, because right. It's just not ready. Right, it's not ready. All I'm going to do is embarrass myself. Right. Probably piss off. Well, oh, sorry. Probably yeah, annoy right. a lot of the a lot of the shooting people because they've got better controlled dogs. Right. Uh, so to me, it's just the manners of I know my dog's not ready, and right. I, I wouldn't bring it into that environment until I knew it were rock steady. When you talk about embarrassing, yeah, I, I, I'm going to, like I said, I, I've always watched, like, when they have all the pickup dogs, you know, they're all, they're all just waiting their turn. They, they don't, yeah. you know, I know that takes training, but it, it takes, you're formatting that way before you're ever shooting in front of the dog. You're, you, yeah. you see, you've got that behavior yeah. down. And to that point, I went with a fella, his name was Dick DeCam. He was a judge. He was one of my judge mentors in the organization I judged for. Yeah. Him and I went hunting. I took my wire hair 
open the tailgate. I've got my e. I've got my collar, you know, because I, that I was back then. I was like, I got to have a collar on, you know, I got to have an e collar, right? And I've got to get my vest on yet, and I got to get my gun out. And what yeah. did I do? I opened the door. The dog bolts past me, <laughs> and he's running circles through the woods. Yeah, yeah. Coming by every, and I'm yelling at him and yelling, and and I was yeah. embarrassed. I really was embarrassed. Yeah. And then Dick's got the same breed of dog. He opens up the thing. The dog bolts out of the kennel like mine did. And for a millisecond, I thought, oh, good. His dog doesn't listen either. <laughs> the minute that dog jumped off the tailgate, he said his name, Buford. And the Ooh. dog sat. Yeah. yeah. And, but he came out of that cage like mine. Yeah. But he had the layer of obedience and repetition. Yeah. The dog sat. And then Dick literally made a point of it. He took his time getting his vest on and he took yeah. his time getting his gun out and he yeah. put the gun case back and I'm yeah. still yelling at my dog <laughs> running in circles and his dog is just, yeah. Like yeah. the dog says, I know I'm going to be in the end zone later. I yeah. just have to act like I yeah. still have to do a dance before I make a touchdown. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. so yeah, those little things that I think that's when you've been there for a while like it to me it's a big thing your dog listening to you is such yeah. a big thing well you, you you can you can do a lot of this around the kennels yeah you know, like in in you you don't have to go out into the fields mm -hmm. and, and and potentially come across game and yeah a lot of the control can be done around the house around right. the yard right you know when you know if you've got multiple dogs you know, having them sat out, recalling one halfway and then another and then another, and then having having that control to come yeah. back to. Yeah. You know, so uh, it, look, it's same as I used to do little and often, but I all same with retrieving. So I used to throw dummies out for my dogs. Mm -hmm. And let's say I did this practice five times. Of those five, three of them. I would go out and pick them up. Okay, yeah, I've, I've, I know so, exactly. What, yeah, I've, I've seen that and actually done that before. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm saying to the dogs, not everything is yours. Right. Only when I tell you. Right. So, because if you get a dog where you throw a dummy or a, anything, whatever you're throwing, whatever you're using, every time you throw it, that dog's going out for it guess what? He's going to get clever. And then every time you throw it, he's probably going to encourage it running out and thinking, right. well, it's going to be mine anyway. Right. It's going to be mine in the end. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, they'll, they'll, as they get wiser and older and they know you, your habits and, and, and what you do, they'll, they'll try to supersede that. So I always kept them guessing. I would like throw dummies out, let them sit, wait, go out, pick them up, put them back, put the lead back on them, put them away. Yeah. But not everything they see is theirs. Right, right. That's control. Same with, the, same with food. I would put them out in the kennels, you know, and I would have them at one end of the kennels, I would recall one at a time. Yeah. Just on food. I mean, they get fed twice, once a day. Yeah. So I was always putting them right. live up that level of control and what I call manners. You know, yeah. when you teach your kids, it's like, please, thank you. Yes, sir. No, mom, thank you. Manners. You get yeah. it right down. They're the foundations, the cornerstone of what these these dogs are going to be. So right. if you can get that right there, you're likely to carry that on in the field. Yeah. If you I, can, yeah. I started that with, um, with Tagus a year ago when I got him home. You know, waiting for food, waiting for the okay for food, waiting for the okay yeah. for the door. Yeah. I I was very lazy. Even with my trained dogs, they were still a little, I'd call them heathens, right? Yeah. And to this day, now he's going to be two years old. When I pour his food in his bowl in his kennel, he looks up at me. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I just use okay for any release, right? And he yeah. bow, 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 eats his food. All That's my it. other dogs... They're literally, as I'm pouring it into the yeah, bowl, yeah. they're, they're yeah. not, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay, I'm okay with that, but yeah. 
he's easier to train because I did yeah. take it slower with him. And I, I think I told you a week ago when we talked, maybe I tell the story to a lot of people. I thought I waited too long for his field work because like when I finally started getting him ready for his puppy test, his natural ability test, yeah. I was like, boy, you don't, you don't have much, boy, you don't have much like, yeah. what? but it only took him a few walks to realize, Oh, Ron's letting me yeah. wander now, yeah. but the recall is there, yeah. you yeah. know, and yeah. now I have to incorporate the whistle and yeah. some hand stuff with it. So yeah, yeah, I took the time with that one, and I'm going to take the time with every one of them. Yeah. Except that little cocker, he just moves. She moves too fast. <laughs> fast, yeah. I'm fast. Sorry. I'm, I'm, well, look, you know, and this is this is the point behind all this, and I think you know, important to for all the listeners to to sort of for me, it's like again, once you know what you want out of the dog, you know, maybe these things that we're discussing, they're not bothered about that. You know, that's. Hey, right. that's 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 okay. This, there's no hard and fast rule that you know you've got right. As long as the dog's doing what you kind of want it to do, and right. it does what it says on the tin, and right. it and and if you're not a particular stickler at those sort of things, hey, you know, peace to uh, peace and love to you. Um, but but if but if you want a little bit more control, mm -hmm. if you know, and and you want everything to be a little bit more tight and sharpened. That takes investment time, takes time into them. Yeah. yeah. Because again, uh, instincts don't expire. No. Right. No. I mean, the That's love it. of a bird yeah. is is going to is is genetically already in that dog. It's already there. Yeah. And in and the in like you said, most dogs, and, and I would say, unless they've been specially bred like some of the pointer competitions in the States, most most bird dogs will pick up a bird. I mean, most, right? So yeah, that is, really at some point, that is just an instinct because yeah. I could take my wife's corgi, that dog retrieves. Yeah. His yeah. last name is my not... French bull, bulldog doing it. My French right. bulldog used to do it, yeah. So that is an instinct. So we worry, and what's not an instinct is impulse control. Yeah. That's yeah. not an instinct. So that's, that's what we're working on. Yeah. Is that yeah. impulse control informing yeah. them yeah. to do like you said if I say hey I'm going to be hunting with my friends and they don't steady their dogs up okay if that, that's fine but you should be able to call that dog off at any minute and have them come back to you you don't want yeah. you want to skip yeah. that you know so well, I mean it's safety for the dog as well you know there yeah. might be an environment out there where you need to recall the dog mm -hmm. I would I, I, I mean for me putting some brakes on a dog yeah you know, it's like driving a car without any brakes. You right. Know. Yeah, you can get away like with it, but it's not safe. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not advisable. Um, using using reverse to slow the truck down <laughs> is, not, <laughs> is not good for the transmission. No, no. But hey, I've seen it done, and um, yep. you know, and, and they're happy and content. And I'm like yeah. I say, it's, you know. I've got a good friend in North Dakota whose dogs have zero training, but they live literally in bird country yeah and I, I i'm sure you can call them back to him but yeah. they literally have no training but it fits his lifestyle yeah so I, i'm just gonna go out in this eight thousand acre yeah. cattle field and i'm gonna go hunting yeah so it works for him but yeah, yeah. and i love that out. you know again that's why i, I right. think so many people get bogged down you know if like say i saw your dog oh my god that's fantastic out and they almost you know i i need to imitate what you're doing right so again variables it's like your lifestyle where you are and what you do with your dogs and that might not necessarily marry with you so what you i i mean like a favorite question of mine is what is a trained gun dog yeah because your perception of one right uh justin's perception of a trained gun dog uh, uh, uh you know ben's perception of a good they're all vastly different. Right. It's, it's kind of what you need to get out of that dog. Right. Now, right. If for, for trialing, for competition, very easy. Because there's a set of rules and they're laid out for you. Right. And you've got, to, you've got to meet that criteria. Right. So train your dog to that standard. Right. When you're talking about the field, wow. Well, you know, you. Yeah. who knows? It's what you want. 
yeah something can like i, I say, would I say that manners though the manners is the one you shouldn't skip right you I can, don't so. you can no. live with a lot of stuff but yeah the manners early on uh yeah. and he, he is living for, and that is literally yeah. and i've i've i know people who've recommended it to me with other dogs they've said right. Get your dog to not let you should be able to go through the door first and then your dog's allowed to come right that's just yeah, yeah. and a lot of people tons of people do that yeah. i honestly didn't do it until this last dog and i'm yeah. i'm on my i don't know i think i did a list last year <laughs> i think i'm on my 24th dog right of yeah. all the dogs i've owned yeah and this is the first one i stopped some of that early impulse control and yeah. i was like wow <laughs> this dog yeah. I, I want to say this dog really likes me. No, I I let it under. It was like my mom took me to church. She expected yeah. me to be quiet. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's and, right. Yeah. And I'll bet you I couldn't take either one of my four grandchildren to church right now because <laughs> I would be asked to go. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be sent into the cry yeah. room with no. my dog. I mean, I, I'm over, like, when, you know, when, when I were out with my dogs, I, I'd be over crit. You know, like, say if they failed or they did something, yeah. I'd never blame the dogs. I knew it was always me. Right. I would only say, I didn't pick up a signal. Something, I'd work out what happened, where I want alert. So I, I, I like to think, same as like, you know, we were talking about the shot. I would say there's no, my personal opinion for what it's worth is, there's no gun dog is gun shy. Right. You've just put it in an environment. You've set up something to make it gun right. shy. Right. You, right. You've, you, you've introduced it too quickly, too closely, too loud. Too, you've done it's something yeah. to, to, and you've not studied the, the dog's, uh, right. the dog, uh, boldness or a right. lack of it. Um, so I mean, I, 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 I'm I'm always critical of myself if I failed right. in doing something. Yeah. Because dogs are dogs will kind of do what they're trained to do if right. there's enough repetitive training and, and no, nobody's bred a line of dogs that I'll guarantee like say, buy a dog for me, you're gonna have a hell of a time getting them used to yeah. gunfire. No, they shouldn't it shouldn't no. be a thing. It shouldn't no. be a thing. Well look, I've, I've, I've heard I've, that. Yeah. I've Sorry. heard that and I've heard people say like, well, that breed, that breed is more sensitive. So be careful with the gun. Yeah. Maybe that breed just develops slower. There's nothing yeah. sensitive about it. It just, no. it's not ready. No, no. I wasn't ready for high school, let alone grade yeah. school, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, I've, I, I've seen people buy champion to champion pups. So you're thinking, right, these are bred, you know, like it's come out the tin. Yeah. As best you can. This is your blank canvas, and I've seen people ruin them. So yeah. there's it's it's there's no hard and fast. Just because you're going to get the best, it's what we do as trainers. Right. Yeah. Um, to oh, the dog God. and the environment. Yeah. I think I'll name this episode. Take your time and build a rabbit pen. <laughs> no, no, no. I I will say I'm not going to build a rabbit pen. <laughs> no, no. I I I like the idea of it. And again, that you're not doing that rabbit pen when they're 12 weeks old. No, no. So much no. other stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just interesting, just like again, to, to I, you know, as I'm now more swaying to the American market, you know, and and the how the Americans hunt, you know, I, I I'm loving exactly what you guys do. I think it's it's fantastic. Right. But but, it, but there's different ways to do certain things, you know, and. Uh, and it's just being susceptible to, and it's interesting. I find it interesting. Yeah, yeah it's good. Well, let's let's wrap her back to. Uh, um, let's wrap her back up to. Well, your your site in the UK is UK Gun Dogs UK, right? Well, I have two sites. It's www.gundogsdirect.co.uk yeah. and www.gundogsuk.co.uk. Okay. So now, you <laughs> if now to that point, and the one you started here is Gun Dogs USA. That you're launching, you're launching yeah, now. That's right. Yeah. But there's no reason because a lot of people do import dogs, right? I sure. Mean, yeah. There's the, there's, there's, I've found a lot of breeders uh, in the US, you know, English Springer Spaniels and, right. and breed, you know, breeding so from, from, that's from a, that's the a tool. UK. Let's, yeah. let's say if someone's looking for a cocker, 
Yeah. You know, don't wait for just you can go to the UK site and you'll find those dogs. Oh, there's, 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 there's I mean, the, those sites are popular and there's, there's, there's ample dogs on there. And, and because, again, we, we keep it simple and honest. Uh, uh, and and that's what hunting people are. They don't want to. They, they don't want to fuss. It, it, it's it's kind of an honest sight. Uh, people sell the litters on there, and they have great success. They're on there probably less than a few weeks, and and their litters are sold. It's um, and that's what I want to do with the American market. You know, I just want to give people a a universal platform, very simple, very straightforward. No no uh, no featured things. No no small prints just a just an honest working dog website where you can go on breeders trainers advertise your services use that as a central hub just to to get what you need right uh, to do your hunting well cool i will uh i'll mention it throughout the year i'll be looking at the website as i'll probably start recognizing some of my <laughs> my friends over the country are like, oh, look, you just you just listed your litter on Gun Dogs USA. I huh? say you listen to the podcast, so yeah. Well, we've uh, got your we've got your link, the 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 Upland Institute on on Gun Dogs USA. So again, right. if you just need to to um, find your find find your website and find the training videos, they're on there. They can great just direct link to you. Now all we got to do is that proverbial like, if you're ever gonna be in the West hunting. Or are you just going to stay down in the sunshine? What what what's your plan? What's your, not not to get personal, but what's your plan? There's not a lot of places to hunt in Cancun, so you can't no, stay there forever. No, I, I do sort of six months on, six months off. Okay. So we've got a little place here, and then go back to you know shooting. This shooting season, I haven't because I've been launching the site, so I've been yeah. flat out this year. Mm -hmm. Next year, I mean, I'm itching to get behind the gun and get get under some dogs. So. Yeah. Uh, next year, I'll when the shooting season kicks off, I've got two trips. In fact, three trips. I plan going dove shooting in Argentina. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Romania to see my friend. We're going to do some ball shooting. Yeah. Then I'll I'll do some drives back in the UK. Right. Well, you know, it might be easier for me to just fly across the pond because I don't mind hunting with other people's dogs. So. Uh, <laughs> You've also got an invite here. You know you're yeah. welcome. Can I'm building. I'm building up my UK. No. Yeah. I'm building up my UK directory. <laughs> so maybe I can get you and Ben, and we can get. So I would, like I said, I'm gonna. I'm gonna wear the tweed one day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll lend you some stuff. I'll lend you. I'm plenty. Yeah, you're you're about you're about what 44, 46 jacket maybe. 40, I'm, I'm 48. I'm a 48. 48. Good, because I'm getting that way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to be less, but I'm 48. Well, I want to be less too, but you know, as long as you got something, then I won't have to. I won't have to buy it. Yeah. Um, five. What well, are you? Five. Well, five ten. Five nine. Well, how tall are I, you? I'm six three. Ah, see now I'm there. I'm gonna have to cuff the pants if I borrow one. <laughs> and that's ten. Well, I, I know plenty of people in the UK, so if you need okay. somewhere to shoot and recommendations, you set you know, me up with the gun and the clothes, and I'll get over there. I could probably speak to Dave actually for you. And, oh. and you could go and join Dave. Oh, you know, and I wonder if he wouldn't want to do a podcast sometime about shooting. That would be fun. Yeah, honestly, Ron, if you, I will have a chat with him, but if you can speak to this guy, you know, the viewers need to listen to him. He is yeah. Yeah. so knowledgeable about shooting. It's yeah. unbelievable. Well, that that I would appreciate that. If you made a connection, I'll yeah. uh, I, I, can, I can deal with the six-hour time change. I can hit his time yeah. frame and... I've yeah. watched enough of his videos, and I'll probably be watching a few more this afternoon. Yeah. And no, I'll, 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 I'll. As soon as this is done, I'll, I'll drop him an email, and um, I'll get that lined up for you. He's a, he's great. a great, he's a great guy. So maybe we can learn how to take our time with our dogs and shoot better. How's that? Maybe, maybe there's a thought. <laughs> New Year's resolution. Well, yeah. Ben, no, thanks great. for coming on. Hey, Ron, uh, thank dogs you. Dogs USA has just got launched. You guys can start digging through it and uh, wish you the best and we'll stay in touch. And let's 100%. do maybe uh, if nothing else in a year from now, after this thing's going, yeah, uh, let's come out, back on and uh, have some success stories with it. I'd love to run. Thank you very much. Right. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you guys. All, All the best. Right.